we cruise multiple times a year. And now we're cruising for multiple weeks at a time. I'm a single mom, so saving money on my cruises is so important to me in order for us to travel as much as we do. Today, I'm gonna to share with you some of the tips that I use in order to save myself thousands. Disclaimer, this is what works for us. Some people will disagree with me, but I wanted to share what works for us and how we save money to help you save money as well. Pay attention to what deals are happening. If there's a cruise line that you really love, make sure to sign up for their newsletter. If you work with a travel agent, make sure you know which cruise lines they work with and what deals they have going on. For us, we look for the kids sale free with Royal Caribbean and with Princess, we look for the third or fourth guest sale free. This means that for my daughter, I'm just paying the port fees and taxes. I don't have to pay the base fare. We try to book almost all our cruises using this. Now this only works for the cruises that we sail with my brother. When it's just me and my daughter sailing, I'm passenger one, she's passenger two, so we don't get the savings for this. But most cruises, we are sailing with my brother in the cabin with us, so we get a great deal by having her be sailing free. Booking an interior cabin. Now, a lot of my clients, they want a balcony cabin, especially if they're going to a beautiful place like Alaska. But for us, we don't spend a lot of time in our cabin and we prefer to be able to venture out on the ship up on decks and have our views there. Now, there are some exceptions to this. On the Oasis of the Seas, we did have a promenade view family room and that was a huge room with that slept actually five people, but it was only a little bit more than the interior, which is why I decided to splurge on that. On an upcoming cruise on the Adventure of the Seas, we were actually sailing in an ocean view cabin. And that was because it was actually a couple hundred dollars cheaper per person to sail in than an inside cabin. It's my friend's first cruise and I was like, yes, we can get an ocean view cabin. It's a lower deck, it's not the best location, but whatever, because it is a nicer room for us. Now, depending on what you have going on back home, this might be something that you can't do without. And that is the internet. For us, we currently don't have any reason to have an internet package. When we need internet on port extensive cruises, we just get an eSIM card. We haven't been on any cruises yet that have been a ton of sea days, so we really haven't needed anything else. We didn't have internet at all when we went on the Princess Cruise to Alaska, but it didn't turn out to be a problem at all, and that was 11 nights. Coming up on our Royal Caribbean Cruise on the Jewel of the Seas to the Norwegian Fjords, we have a 13 night cruise. It's kind of port heavy, so we are just gonna get an eSIM card again for that. It just makes more sense. We've considered getting an internet package for our 21 day Mediterranean with Princess, but I'm not sure that we're gonna do it. We'll probably just, again, stick with an eSIM card because it's so much cheaper, and then we have internet while we're in port. We also don't do a drink package. Now, for some people, this is very important to have because they do enjoy having drinks while they're cruising, but me and my brother, we don't drink alcohol. We don't drink pop, soda, none of that. So occasionally we'll have a non-alcoholic drink, but usually it's like one, maybe two a cruise. It just isn't worth it. The only time I've ever done a drink package was years ago on Princess when it was super cheap to get the non-alcoholic package and it included things like milkshakes. We did it, like so much stuff with that, but now it's not really worth it. For a lot of people, if you're sailing with Princess, the Princess Plus or Premier packages are actually the more value option for you because they do include those drink packages, the internet, bunch of other stuff. So if you are like someone that absolutely needs to have a drink package, that's the route to go, especially if you're sailing with Princess. But for us, we'd save hundreds, hundreds of dollars. Another thing we don't do is specialty dining. I know some people rave and think that they have to do specialty dining. Maybe we're just too cheap, but honestly, I've done specialty dining one time and it was for my birthday and I got like a super deal because my daughter was free and then we did a lunch, which made it even cheaper. It was so cheap and I was disappointed because honestly, the food was okay, but there wasn't anything magical about it. And I feel like that with most specialty dining restaurants. We're vegan, we were vegetarian when I did that specialty dining. And it just is one of those things where it's like, nah, there's not many options for us and I don't see the value in doing that over the MDR or the buffet just want to be full and cruise food is delicious pretty much anywhere on the ship so why pay extra for it i know some people will disagree with me but i believe in if you want to do specialty dining save it for a special occasion do the lunch but other than that there's no real need to do it now with princess's casual dining we probably will partake in some of that especially with the salty dog gastro pub this has like burgers and stuff like that and they do have a veggie burger and it looks amazing so we'll probably do that on our next cruise but other than that, probably not. We've done Johnny Rockets in the past as well on Royal Caribbean, and those I don't count as too much of specialty dining because they're relatively cheap. But even with that, sometimes it's like, Alfredo's Pizzeria, is it really that much better? Maybe. Let me know in the comments if you've done Alfredo's and you think it definitely is better than Slice. But for us, eh, I don't really care that much about it. 
If you're finding this video helpful and you enjoy cruising, especially with princess cruises, don't forget to hit the subscribe button for more content like this. If you are a solo female cruiser or a single mother cruiser, go check out my private Facebook group. The link is in the description and I post tips and tricks and different specials in there and all that kind of stuff exclusively for women cruisers. The next tip that I have for you is to prepay for your excursions. We usually save about 10 to 15% because there's sales going on pre-cruise. You can do this through your cruise personalizer, through Royal Caribbean or Princess or any cruise line app. Usually they have a sale going on. If there's no sale on that excursion, it's usually because it's gonna sell out and it's probably gonna sell out fast, so you'll wanna pre-purchase it anyway. But for the most part, it's always gonna be better to pre-purchase stuff. That includes your drink packages and internet packages too, if that's what you want to be purchasing. It's always better to purchase it before you cruise because you will pay more once you're on board. And talking about excursions, choose your excursions carefully. We used to book excursions on every single port we went to because we felt like we had to. Now we pick and choose. We look in the port and thoroughly investigate it. Lots of research involved to see what the port is like and what things we can do for free or cheap on our own. Some places are easier to do this because they're safer or because we feel like they're safer, but then other places it's just like, we cannot get to wherever we need to go. We're going to Norway this summer and some of the ports that we're going to, there's just nothing there to do other than an excursion. We also pick and choose based off of what we're interested in. My daughter has loved the train ride in the past, so we are definitely doing the train ride in Flam because it seems fantastic. This means that we're really picky about what other places we go to and what we do, but a lot of it just comes down to researching. Researching, researching, researching what there isn't to do in port that we can save money by just doing it ourselves, what we can just walk around and do. Of course, this depends on your mobility and your children and whatever, whoever else you're traveling with. But for us, we try not to book excursions for every single port we go to. We try to reserve it for about three excursions for a 14 day cruise, roughly, depending on where we're going. Like I think for our 21 day Mediterranean, we have four excursions planned out. Depends on the port, but we try to keep it limited because it saves us so much money by not doing excursions on every port, but we still get to enjoy the port by going around and walking around, checking out some museums on our own and whatnot. Destinations like Alaska are fantastic to do this in because the ports are really safe and tourist friendly, but it's not like overcrowded or anything like that. We really enjoy just walking around places like Sitka and just embracing the walking around doing our thing on our own. We're doing five weeks in Alaska in 2026, including a group cruise. And honestly, we only plan on doing three excursions. And the only reason we're doing those excursions are because we're doing it at, with the group. For us, there's so much to do in a lot of ports if you do enough research to be able to just do things on your own and save yourself a ton of money. Now, if you're interested in doing group cruises with us, we do have a Mexico group cruise. The link for that will be in the description box below. But we are doing Alaska, like I said, in 2026, but that information is not quite ready yet because those cruises aren't available to book. But make sure you subscribe because I will be putting out information about that. And this last tip is so simple, but it has saved me thousands and thousands of dollars. And that is just booking early. By booking on the day they are released or the day after they're released, we have saved thousands of dollars. We have a 14 day cruise coming up. We got it for $1,400 Canadian. Now it's over $4,000. Also our 21 day Mediterranean on the Sun Princess brand new ship was $2,800 Canadian when we booked it per person. And now it's over $4,500 per person. Huge, huge savings. Cruise lines, especially like Princess Cruise have really got away from having those exclusive last minute deals. Now it's all about how early can you book. Earlier I mentioned the Princess Plus and Premier packages. If you're interested in learning more about those and to see if they're right for you, go check out this video right here.